Hello, this is John Canalco. It's really a pleasure to be here, uh, and I want to thank Alex for his kind invitation. We've been doing this for many, many years. We've done uh, several years the Topography Guided University courses together, and this is our favorite subject. This talk was part of the um, refractive uh, day uh, at ESUS San Diego yesterday, and I apologize for not being here in person. So two of our, mine and Alex's favorite subject, customized ablation and corner cross-linking. My financial disclosures are shown here and the relevant for this talk are the ones for Alcon, a customized platform that I use, and um, Block Coach, which is currently uh, the owner of the Avidro technology for cross-linking. How common is keratoconus? And uh, we'll come to our subject, but I want to do a little bit of a prelude. In our setting in Greece, we looked at almost 1,500 cataract surgery cases over five years. My own personal practice and we had the luxury of um, having the um, Pentacam maps for all these 60, 70, and 80-year-old patients who were in our practice, not for keratoconus, but for cataract surgery. And we were able to evaluate them, surgeons and optometrists blindly, as far as the um, pre-op diagnosis for keratoconus, especially for keratoconus, regular corneas and irregular for reasons not related to keratoconus. And we're seeing here an example, a little bit of scissoring on the topography in the top, and the pentacam looks perfectly normal except of the tachymetry, and this is the area that we've been dis discussing for many, many years. We're doing a keratoconus diagnosis course uh, at the Academy uh, and at the ESERS in Vienna. I will invite you to join us because it's a big, big course. Our astonishing surprise when we looked at the data, one out of three patients in our practice in Greece has keratoconus. A little over 10% diagnosed by the Pentacam, and an additional 25, 26% to be exact, by suspicion by reading the um, Pentacam images. As you can see here, the top picture is self explanatory. Anybody can look at it and say it's keratoconus. The bottom picture, though, looks relatively normal, but the cornea thickness really bottom um, left image on the pentagon really points out the uh, keratoconus. So we're practicing in a keratoconus minefield, if you may, and this is why we're using so many torque attractor lenses, a presentation we did uh, at Ascaris uh, last year in Washington. And uh, speaking of customized ablations, therapeutic ablations, which is our talk today, this is our first publication, 2007 in Cornea, and we can see on the top left the keratoconic eye after cross-linking picture next to it. S slight difference, as happens today, one or two diopters flattening with cross-linking alone. And since this young patient was contact lens intolerant, we took the big leap. Of course, 07 was the publication. The treatment was in 03. It took us four years to publish this. Uh, and you can see the topography guided treatment plan on the top right. Uh, with the uh, Wavelight platform, uh, the post-op on the bottom left, the difference map next to it, very impressive. We're seeing a bimodal difference, flattening on the cone, and also flattening in the area away from the cone in order to steepen the area just superior to the cone, while the, eye, uh, the other eye is worsening. And this is basically the core concept behind the Atkins protocol, which are, is our premier therapeutic procedure for keratoconus, we can see here again the treatment plan on the left, a pre-op in the middle, post-op on the right. And uh, we've published over 50 peer-reviewed literature papers. We've evaluated over a thousand keratoconic eyes very carefully uh, and documented the changes. And this is the current um, Athens protocol with first the topography guided uh, ablation, which is a therapeutic ablation. It's not meant to treat refracted air as it usually treats only part, a fragment of the refracted air, but focuses more on regularizing the cornea. Uh, on the top, we're using a PTK outside the US. In the US, we're tricking the laser device um, to do a PTK, meaning remove the epithelial thickness, by adding two and a half doctors on the topography guided, the Contura uh, in the US, uh, fix and then treating with a second regular card at plus 275 and that will include both the topography guided fix and the epithelial removal and treat directly on the epithelium. Mitomycin C and cross-linking 
uh, our accelerated um, adventure stops at six milliwatts as with higher fluence and faster cross-linking treatments, we're seeing a more shallow and probably less effective cross-linking as we do with Epion, which is not a go-to uh, technique. And um, I was very honored to be invited by the Journal of Cornea and uh, review uh, all uh, our experience along with other uh, cases uh, with cross-linking and uh, Alex's experiences here as well. Uh, with the ethics program, you can see on the uh, top right that we're talking about a bimodal treatment. And uh, we have added to this uh, adventure using topography modified fluence with a CXL device. This is a mosaic device by Avidra and currently Glaucos, uh, which can give different patterns of cross linking. As you can see on the bottom right, the center green elliptical. Um, sketch is delivering 15 joules, so almost three times the Dresden Protocol energy. The blue oblique rect rectangle is uh, delivering 10 joules, and the red circle central area, 7 millimeter diameter, is delivering the classic um, 6 uh, joules, which is close to the Dresden Protocol. So we're seeing a modify, customize, influence, and shape the delivery of light in order to attain a controlled refractive added effect to our athletes portable patients. And we're seeing on the bottom um, sequence, the pre-op, the after, and the difference. And the caveat here is that we're getting more of a refractive, a therapeutic refractive shift in the cornea with less eczema ablation. The quest for this uh, went even further when ray tracing became available. We have published this in the Journal of Cornea uh, as far as using it in regular eyes. And we're seeing here on the top a topography guided, a contura, so to speak, in alkaline language uh, treatment for keratoconus. And the bottom, the same eye treated with ray tracing. And you can see the difference here is that in the ray tracing, treatment plan, there's almost very little treatment over the area of the cone, which is a big relief as this is the area that is thinnest. Thus, ray tracing is viewing the cornea, and this is really pivotal, as a tilted cornea. So the ectasia, which invariably acts to have the cornea bulge out inferiorly and sink in superiorly by the topographer, is attempted to become normalized as a single structure, as a single cornea. As in the language of ray tracing, which views the whole eye optics, it's viewing a nectatic cornea as a tilted cornea, and thus treats more superiorly in the part hyperopic arc. What's the advantage of this? That's where the cornea is the thickest. So we really don't have any restrictive cornea reserve issues there. Plus, it takes into consideration posterior cornea curvature aberrations and total eye aberrations. And um, we're, uh, we're seeing here the pre-op, post-op on the top pictures and difference map uh, on our uh, star publication patient several years ago in the Journal of Cornea. This is a physician that I treated in New York. Uh, in a New York office, and uh, she had, as you can see, intracornea ring segments. We took the segments out. We performed the Athens protocol, and on the bottom topography pictures, you can see the right eye, the left eye. The difference maps are the big maps. The pre-ops on the top, post-ops on the bottom. You can see the drastic, dramatic effect. Uh, if we look at the uh, flattening on the cone and steepening in the flattened superior area, the difference maps here approach the seven diopters on the right eye. And on the left eye, a uh, stunning over 10 diopter normalization, something that no other technique can give. On the uh, left-hand side, top, bottom, the left and right eye uh, peculiar maps. Um, literature supports combining the two techniques, and uh, these are some of the uh, our papers and review papers. Um, I know Alex has published on this as well. And I will close with my six pearls on combining CXL and eczema laser. First, if you have a laser vision candidate that you're suspecting keratoconus, treat it as such. Don't use cross-linking as an alibi to be LASIK or SMAP. Uh, your go-to procedure is either uh, surface ablation, 
you can consider adding CXL or working with the lens. If my patients are over 35 and have, they're stable as far as keratoconus, and we've talked in our keratoconus diagnosis um, courses that this is defined by the epithelial maps, and um, we combine uh, surface ablation with uh, a flash CXL. It's probably the only area that we use at accelerated CXL at 30 milliwatts. Now, if you're refractive result when you use uh, an ablation, any ablation, even if you're a pubic ablation, and CXL is a surprise, you get a significant overcorrection, don't be discouraged because this is underlying that the cross thinking was absolutely necessary in that case. And it did give a significant refractive effect. So be prepared that if you do prophylactic CXL in suspicious eye, you may get over flattening, but Although it's a surprise, this is a good thing that it meant. It means that the cornea needed the cross thinking because it was, event, in the end, biomechanically unstable. We've shown that in hyperopic LASIK, it helps with long term stability. This was published many years ago. This is all I had. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank you, Alex, for inviting me. This is John Kalanopoulos from Athens, Greece, signing off. Thanks so much.